Hello, hello, welcome back to another video on the channel where healing and spiritual growth are front and center. This video shout out goes to Richard Maitland. Thank you for your continued support. And the question that we're going to tackle is, do narcissistic abusers recognize when others are narcissistic abusers but still can't see themselves as one? Yes, and this is more often with the part-time narcissistic abusers than it is the full-time one. The full-time one pretty much are just, they think they're perfect, there's nothing wrong with them, it's just that it's everybody else that's the problem, okay? The part-time one, they kind of, they can see it, all right? They can see when the abuse is happening. They may not know they themselves have a few. Remember, the part-time narc abusers are the ones that have the demon spirits that are not not necessarily the Jezebel. It's just they have maybe the insecurity demon. They have the jealousy demon. They have, you know, just a few, a little small package or whatever. That's what we mean by part-time narc abusers. Because it's, whenever they get tricked into the fear-mongering that goes on out there in the fallen world, whenever the part-time ones get tricked into it, that's when their abuse comes out. All right, just so you all know, the full-time one, their abuse comes out all the time. All right, it's just they do it in subtle ways and let's, you know, and that's where the term covert comes from. When they do it in subtle ways, you don't really know that, you know, we, we didn't know until we learned what a gaslight was with a backhanded compliment and things like that, okay? They'll do that all the time. Part-time one, not so much. Part-time ones, usually when they get tricked into fearing something that they don't need to be afraid of, and that's when their abuse comes out. This is why I said in a previous video, if you haven't seen it yet, I highly recommend it because I was, where I talk about how fear is the foundation for the abuse, and that goes many ways. And it's because those who are living in fear, see, when the enemy can trick everybody into living in fear, real quick reminder, everyone, when he can trick anybody into living in fear, then that human host is going to have that demon spirit, and they are going to abuse. It's going to come out through that, okay? And that's why I say it's fear is the foundation for the abuse. And at the same time, ironically, they themselves also tolerate and receive the abuse and they don't see it. So we always want to keep that in mind. But yes, the part-time one, they can recognize the abuse especially when they're not living in fear, okay? When they're not in a moment of fear, okay? Because they're not, remember, that's when that one for a part-time one, they hop on and they hop off. All right? They hop on and hop off. I kid you not. Like I say often, it is intriguing to watch. But they are not always going to be in fear. They're going to have their good day. And they're just, they're not full-time, full-blown abusers. No. And many could say that those would be the covert one. But we have to really stop and think about it. Because yes and no. To those of us who can see all the abuse, whether it be from a part-time abuser or a full-blown one, those of us that can see it, nothing is covert anymore. So I just want everybody to keep that in mind also. There's a lot of that talk, and I understand because it helps to put things in perspective when you say covert narcissist. But once we get to this point where we can see it and we can spot them, especially the demon spirit, they're not covert anymore. It doesn't matter what kind they are. So, you have that to look forward to, by the way. There's your encouragement, everyone. If you haven't gotten there yet, again, you will to hang in there. Because, again, God is not, <laughs> he woke you up. He, yeah, yeah, he is not going to let you go. So, but narcissistic abusers, let's stay with the part-time one. They can notice it, but they have, especially if they have that high pride, okay? Remember, yes, I know the high pride is associated with the Jezebel. There are different levels of that pride. Also, keep that in mind. See, here's where cognitive dissonance can seep in if we're not careful. When we're talking about high pride, we're talking about the ones who, these are the part-time narcissistic abusers who don't recognize it in themselves. Like they haven't seen the moot in their own eye yet. Remember, we all, like I said previously, before God woke us up and we got tricked into engaging in some of that, we were kind of part-time ones ourselves. We just didn't know it. 
All right, and God wakes us up, we start to realize, oh, we got to change our way, and that's called repenting. So never forget that, cause, but we got duped, all right? Just know that too, and God knows that. So we start to, as no, we never went out and intentionally would do any harm to anyone. No, 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 that's not, I'm not talking about that. For those who haven't heard it yet, I'm talking about how we got duped into engaging in gossiping. We got duped into engaging in sometimes slander, okay? We got duped into reactive abuse, okay? We did, by the abuser, all right? We did. We didn't, that wasn't intentional from us. It's intentional from them. So there's your difference, all right? So don't let CD keep, well, CD again, by the way, is the acronym for cognitive dissonance. So don't let the CD creep in there either, all right? Because remember, when God wakes us up, we turn to Him, we're already forgiven, and we're, com we're coming out from under all of that, and we're repenting. So, nothing, you know, that's it, okay? <laughs> we just keep going forward and recognizing it. But the one who don't ever wake up, the one who don't ever, yes, they do, they see it, and there's certain levels of pride. So, some of these can have such a pride where they think they can do everything themselves, that they don't need God, and that they don't need Jesus. They think they can do everything on their own, alright? And I mean literally on their own. And they won't reach out to help for help. They won't reach out to anyone for help. And I'm not talking about survivors. If you've just gotten out of one and you're struggling with, because you feel like someone's going to look at you like you have five heads or three heads, I'm not talking about that's perfectly normal. You will overcome that because it's now becoming more noticeable for you to get the... You, I mean, we are out here for you, okay? So you don't have to worry anymore about telling your story and being looked at. We're, I'll tell you, spiritual warriors for Christ, we're, no, we're not going to look at you like that because we know. Uh, your story, we know. Uh, <laughs> been there, okay? So we're not... We're not going to look at you like that. So just know that. There's more of us out here than you think. And I know that being in that abusive situation for so long, it would be difficult to believe that right away. So just give yourself time, okay? There's a lot more of us out here who we, we believe you, okay? We know. As crazy as it sounds with your story, you don't worry about it. God knows, okay? God knows. And so when you share it with us, you're going to get the support and the guidance that you need. That, it's that simple. All right, we're not going to leave you hanging. I right? just know. It's like I said previously, for those who missed it, I always, for fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm always going to make time for you. Somehow, some way, we're going to we make it happen. All right, when we're, we're not to, we're not leaving each other behind. Okay, we're not alone. No, we're in this. We're you know, it's like if it does go along with that. We're in this together, but we are. Okay, we are soldiers for God, and so we help each other out. And that's a big, big way we do it. Okay, but back to when they, that pride that they have where they don't think they need God or they don't need Jesus, when they have that kind of pride, they won't be able to see. And, and that's why the enemy likes to get at least some kind of level of pride. And it comes with ego, okay? It's ego-driven. Many of us will know that, but for those who don't, it's just a matter of pride and ego go hand in hand. And so they've got a level that won't allow them to even let God in or let Jesus in. They don't even believe. It's like, well, I don't need them. I can do this all by myself. And the reality is that we learn that, no, <laughs> we can't do anything without God and Jesus. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, I'm not talking about cooking and stuff like that. But, of course, we, we do that with him also. So there's a lot of things that go into that, but they won't see. It's because of that pride, whatever level it is, okay? And it may or may not be a Jezebel. It's just there's going to be a level of pride because it's ego-based, all right? The Jezebel kind of pride is way over the top, all right? There's a difference. That one is way over the top, and it's a very haughty one, too. That arrogance, you can see it. They're very, very arrogant in their demeanor, Okay, they it's like that nose in the air type. Uh huh. Y'all know what I'm talking about here. That that's associated with a Jezebel type pride. All right. So there you go on that one. But just a different level of pride where they just think they can do everything themselves and not have any kind of assistance or whatever. Then they're not going to be able to stay. They, they can see other narcissistic abusers. Yes, they notice the pattern and they can see it and they recognize it for what it is. But they don't see 
that part time in them. They want that moot in their own eye. They refuse to see it because the pride, the enemy had designed the pride to do what we could say is to kind of put blinders over the eyes, okay? And we read a lot where Jesus tells the people that he was teaching, he tells them and many different times, it's like, you know, how are you going to call something out but not yet see that moot in your own eye, okay? I'm paraphrasing here, but he did say that a lot. And there's a lot of truth to that. And I would tell you, we come across that, we go, okay, <laughs> yeah, thank you for that reminder. And that's why there's so much inner work that we have to do when God wakes us up, okay? There you go, that's why. And because God wants us to get rid of all of that. He wants us to, you yeah, know, it's so funny because I remember telling someone a while back, they were like, I have no problem telling my ego no. And they came back and they said, well, you know, I can see you telling your ego no. I said, well, you're darn right. I tell my ego no, go away. <laughs> no, not today, Satan. It's just not happening. So that's something to keep in mind, but they don't. And it's unfortunate. So let's always remember something else, everyone. When you, when you come across one of them, they're calling out the abuse, but not yet recognizing it in themselves. And a lot of times, they won't even recognize that they're gaslighting. Also, we have to remember that we were there once too. So let's pray for them always, okay? We didn't know at one time also. And, and then we also do have the part time ones who refuse to believe that they too are engaging in some of that. They refuse to believe it because that's their pride. That's, that's, that, that's a different level of pride. They refuse to believe it. And, you know, it's a sad thing to watch, but it is out there. And so it's all about that discernment and being able to pick it apart, go, okay, so you know who's who kind of thing. Who's got this demon spirit, that one, and then who's the full-blown versus the part-time, things like that. Because underneath it all, there's still a human being, and there's still a lot of learning to do. So we never want to forget that and always keep them in our prayers. It doesn't matter. That's what we're supposed to do. So we keep each other in our prayers, and we keep them in our prayers as well, because it's always God wakes people up at different times on His time. So we can only do what God puts in us to do and help him with that. And then when the person is ready, then God will guide them where he needs them to go to get information or whatever. Or to heal if, that, if they finally come to realize they've got to do some healing themselves. Okay, because a lot of times that's another reason why they'll see the abuse in another narcissistic abuser, especially a full-blown obvious bully. Okay, they'll see it and call it out. But they won't see it in themselves, okay? Because they don't, first of all, many of them don't know it's there yet, all right? And for the ones who don't know it's there yet, the way it's just let God do his thing, they'll wake up and then they'll go, ooh, they'll start, they'll, they'll want to start to heal themselves, okay? And, well, let Jesus start the process and then they'll work as a team. It's teamwork when you get on Team Jesus, all right? And so we got to keep that in mind. And then you're going to have those who just, it, that cognitive dissonance, they will refuse to even see that whatever it is they're trauma bonded to is abusing them. They'll see the abuse everywhere else, but they won't see it right in front of them. And it's due to that cloud of cognitive dissonance, which is what the enemy wants. So you got those, and then you have the ones who just have that, that prideful persona of they can do everything without God and Jesus and they'll see the abuse in others but fail to realize that they have their own issues as well and it's an unfortunate thing but like I just said we pray for them all right as always if you have any or any question at all about that you know where to find me sending love and light to all fellow warriors thank you for watching and for your support until next time let's show some gratitude to the heavenly father and you keep being you in Jesus' name, amen.